Great news, everybody. You can eat sushi in pregnancy. With a few exceptions, of course. There is a lot of information on the internet about what you can and can't do during pregnancy. And there are a lot of old wives' tales out there about what determines the sex of the baby, etc., etc. In this video, we're going to debunk 20 common pregnancy myths. Every pregnant person has a different experience and people love to comment on other people's pregnancies. Every pregnant woman I know has had somebody tell them what sex the baby is going to be based on how they're carrying, or that they're going to have a really big baby or a really small baby based on how they look. It drives me nuts that people think that they get to comment on pregnant women's bodies, but I think it all springs from a genuine interest in the pregnancy process and also about what people have heard and old wives' tales that run amok in our community. I am going to review 20 pregnancy myths, and I am sure there are plenty more out there that I'm not going to mention in this video. If you've heard of a different myth, feel free to comment in the comment section below. I'm sure we'd all love to hear about them. If you're enjoying this video, like it and subscribe to my channel so you can learn more about pregnancy and women's health in the future. Before I start, please remember I am not here to give you medical advice. There are many opinions and recommendations out there, and if you actually want advice, please go to your healthcare provider. But let's get into the myths. Myth number one, you can't eat sushi during pregnancy. Pregnancy is all about risks and benefits, and women are told that they can't eat sushi for two reasons. Number one, raw fish can potentially encourage bacteria to grow and therefore can cause harm to a baby. Number two, certain types of fish have increased levels of mercury. I tell pregnant women that they can safely eat sushi as long as it's not raw, and if they are going to eat raw sushi, they need to make sure they know where it's sourced from. If you're living in the middle of the country and you have no idea how long it's been since that fish was caught, probably not a good idea. But if you live on the coast and know that fish was caught same day, it's probably a little bit safer. As far as mercury is involved, there are plenty of lists on the internet which tell you which fish to avoid and which fish to eat less of. Speaking of eating things, let's talk about myth number two. You can't eat deli meat while you're pregnant. Once again, we're mostly worried about bacteria growing on deli meat, but that doesn't mean you can't eat it. If you pop it in the microwave for 15 seconds or you toast your sub, it's perfectly safe to eat lunch meat while you're pregnant. And again, if you can be certain it hasn't grown bacteria, then you're fine. Myth number three, if I'm craving something, I should eat it. This is absolutely not true. If you're craving sweets or fast food during your entire pregnancy, that does not mean that you should always eat sweets and fast food. If you're a vegetarian and you're craving meat during your pregnancy, you don't have to eat meat. Just make sure you're getting enough protein. Myth number four, sex is going to hurt my baby. I think a lot of men have this fear, but there are some women who fear this as well. It is 100% not true. Unless your healthcare provider tells you you have a condition of pregnancy which should prevent you from having sex. Otherwise, go forth, have some sex, get after it. Myth number five, the baby's heart rate determines the baby's sex. Nope, not true. During any normal healthy pregnancy, for the most part, the fetal heart rate should be between 120 and 160. It can be anywhere in this range and be normal and it doesn't determine what sex the baby is. Myth number six, the way that you carry your baby determines the baby's sex. I've often heard people say that boys are carried lower. That's also not true. Boys are often bigger, but second babies are also often bigger. And it really depends on your body type, how you're carrying your baby, so it does not determine the baby's sex. Myth number seven, if you have a lot of heartburn, your baby is going to have a full head of hair. Almost every single pregnant person has heartburn, and there are a whole lot of bald babies born. There is absolutely no correlation between heartburn and hair. If there was, we would never have bald babies. Myth number eight, I have to stop breastfeeding my older child because I'm pregnant. This honestly used to be a recommendation some providers made. However, as we've researched it more, we've realized that in normal, healthy pregnancies, it's perfectly safe to breastfeed another child while you're pregnant. Myth number nine, I should only sleep on my left side during my pregnancy. This recommendation is made because of where your heart is located in your body. When you sleep on your left side, 
side, you get slightly increased blood flow, which slightly increases the oxygen amount in your body. However, it's really not that important. And on that note, you can sleep on your back if you want. I think a lot of people hear that they can't sleep on their back. However, that's because when you're laying on your back, especially later in pregnancy, there is a big blood vessel that kind of runs down your spine and it can get depressed and therefore cause your blood pressure to drop. If your blood pressure drops, you're going to feel crappy and your baby's going to feel crappy. If you both feel fine, then it's fine to sleep on your back. So don't shame yourself. I once had a woman tell me she slept on her stomach her whole pregnancy. I can't imagine how that was comfortable, but her and her baby felt fine and so it was fine. Myth number 10. I'm an athlete, but I can't exercise heavily during my pregnancy. The general rule of thumb during pregnancy is don't start any heavy exercise programs if you haven't already been doing them. However, if you already run marathons and you want to continue to run marathons, that is perfectly fine. But listen to your body because pregnant women are more prone to injury and you may have to take it a little slower than you have before. Which brings us to myth number 11. I'm an athlete and I participate in dangerous sports and I should keep doing them because I'm really good at them and I promise I won't hurt myself. That was a long myth, but ultimately, if you participate in things like downhill skiing or mountain biking, no, it's not okay for you to continue to do those during your pregnancy just because you're good at them and you think you won't fall. We worry a lot about abdominal trauma during pregnancy, and if you happen to fall while you're skiing or off of your mountain bike, that could cause serious problems to your pregnancy and to your baby. Myth number 12, I'm super healthy, so I'm not at risk for things like gestational diabetes and preeclampsia, while unhealthy women are certainly at a higher risk of developing things like preeclampsia and gestational diabetes. I have had plenty of very healthy women develop these disorders as well. So you should make sure to follow your healthcare provider's advice and get regular screening and testing. On a similar vein, myth number 13. I don't have any family history of genetic abnormalities, so I don't need genetic testing. Genetic abnormalities at times run in families. However, most babies who have a genetic abnormality do not have a family history of it. There are many reasons to either get genetic testing or to not get genetic testing, but a lack of family history is not one of them. Myth number 14, traveling to and from altitude during my pregnancy will cause me to go into labor. Y'all, I live at altitude and so do most of my patients and they travel up and down from altitude all the time and they don't go into labor because of it and neither will you. What I do think is fun though is that we often notice that full moons and big storms do tend to bring more people in in labor. Speaking of labor, myth number 15. I can cause myself to go into labor if I fill in the blank. Many women will tell you, I ate this spicy food and I went into labor or I went on a long walk and I went into labor, etc., etc. The reality is that these women did go into labor, but it it was a coincidence that it happened because they ate something spicy or they went on a long walk. We actually don't know what truly causes labor and some things can induce labor. However, going on a walk, eating spicy foods, those didn't cause you to go into labor unless your body was going to go into labor anyway. Acupuncture is one of those things that can sometimes help women get into labor, which brings me to myth number 16. I can't get a massage, chiropractic care, or acupuncture because I'm pregnant. I would always make sure that you're getting these things done by people who know how to take care of pregnant women. However, as long as you're seeking out specialists who know how to take care of you, it's fine to do them. Myth number 17, epidurals wear off. This isn't true, but for some people, it feels like it's true. Epidurals are run on a pump much like an IV. You will get a steady amount of medication during the labor and the birth process. However, epidurals are meant to help with pain receptors. They don't actually help prevent against pressure. And for some women, as they are giving birth and pushing, it can feel like that pressure is so intense that it's actually pain. This is not your epidural wearing off, but it's simply a function of how the epidural works. 
Myth number 18, epidurals cause lifelong back pain. Women who go through pregnancy and childbirth often do report back pain that lasts weeks, months, or years after they give birth. But when you look at the statistics, the rate of women who have back pain is the same between women who had an epidural and women who didn't. The reality is that carrying an extra 30 to 40 pounds during pregnancy strains all the muscles and ligaments in your low back and can increase your risk of low back pain after you give birth. Epidurals aren't to blame, pregnancy is. Myth number 19, my milk isn't in, my baby isn't getting enough milk. I hear this often with women who have just given birth and haven't had their milk supply come in yet. It can take three to five days normally for the milk to come in after you deliver your baby. During that time, your body produces something called colostrum, which is small in amount, but rich in nutrition. Your baby's belly when they're born is only the size of a marble, so they really don't need a lot of volume. For healthy term babies, there is rarely a need to supplement with donor milk or formula before your milk comes in. There are outliers to this, however, so make sure to follow the advice of your healthcare team. And myth number 20, TikTok tells me I should pump before my baby's born. Many women will start leaking colostrum for weeks or months before their baby is actually born. And for some of you, you may actually have a lot of it and you could start collecting it if you want to. But we don't recommend pumping to do that. We recommend self-expression. However, you're not going to be able to get your milk to come in before your baby is born. What triggers milk production is actually the delivery of the placenta. Some providers do suggest that you purposefully start collecting colostrum with hand expression starting at 37 weeks, and some providers don't, but you don't need to be collecting it throughout your pregnancy. And if you're pumping before your baby is born, all you're likely to do is make your nipples really sore and make it harder to breastfeed. Okay, that's it for today. Make sure to write any of the other myths you've heard of in the comments below so that the rest of us can get a kick out of them. And remember, if the internet or a family member tells you something and you're not sure if it's a myth, make sure to ask your healthcare provider. It's always better to hear it from your own doctor than from Dr. Google.